Stuart Law, thanks ever so much for joining us. Just finished training at Radlett. Uh, this afternoon, the club made a, an important decision uh, in respect of restructuring the cricket department. It's It's been a difficult season, Stuart. We all know that. Um, in terms of how you feel about this, are you of the opinion that something had to give, something had to change? Uh, when when a team's not performing well, and it's not just been um, you know a couple of months, it's been going on for quite some time now. Um, unfortunately, that you know there, there is change that is needed, um, and you know the club have made the decision to to to, to make the decision they have um, based on you know the, the lack of performance from the team on the field. Now, once again, it's not through lack of effort, not through lack of trying, but just something wasn't quite quite clicking, and you know. Time, time's come for uh, a bit of change. Absolutely. Well, that change, uh, Stuart, sees Angus stepping aside from um, head of professional cricket, um, sees you taking on more responsibility. Now, talking of Gus, you obviously have worked extremely closely with Gus for three years. He's been quite an incredible servant to this club, 20 years or more as a player, 10 years or more as an administrator. What's great in all of this is that Gus, yes, he's stepping aside from professional cricket, but a huge success of recent years is that development pathway of young talent and Gus will now be overseeing that. Yeah, and that's it's great for the club that they still, you know, have his services. Um, as, you, as you mentioned, you know, to be a player, a legendary player at the club, to represent the club with, you know, the, pa the passion that he did, um, the heart that he showed uh, on field and he, he took that into his administration roles. Um, he wears it on his sleeve, you know, every performance he, he wears it on his sleeve and, you know, he, he often takes a lot of the brunt of it. Um, and that's that's self-inflicted as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a shame for the big man that uh, I really enjoyed his company. I, I still I still will enjoy his company. Um, he got me here to the club. Um, I owe him a lot, really, for you know helping me get back into into county cricket. Um, it's a shame that he's he, he's had, he's been you know, stood down from his from his position. But I still want him around. I still want him to to come and enjoy a day's play rather than you know sit in the corner kicking bins and. You know, shouting out things. I want him to come and sit in the dressing room with a smile on his face, watching a good day's play. So, whilst it's uh, whilst it's sad that you know the big man's moving sideways, um, it's great news that he's still going to be around and you know, very much a, a focal point of the club. Couldn't agree with you more. Now, Stuart, as the club's head of communications, I'm obviously privy to a lot of the feedback we get from members uh, and from fans, not only across social media but also through email and through calls into the office. We all know it's been an extremely challenging year and, and I completely understand, as I'm sure do you, mm. um, the frustration that members and fans feel at, at the results, first and foremost. Um, it's gone beyond that, though. There's been a lot of call primarily on social media. There's been a lot of call for accountability. There's been a lot of call for apologies from the management. Uh, there's been a lot of call for you to step down, for Gus to step down, which, when you look at the service you guys are giving, is, is wrong, in my opinion. How do you respond to all that? How's the, how's that affected you? I know it's affected Gus badly. Um, you know, I, I, I used to read some of the comments. Um, you know, I feel the fans' frustration. Believe me, we're we're just as frustrated as, as you know, the fans and the the members are. Um, you know, and they're they're right to be frustrated. Everyone's right to have an opinion. Um, you know, how they they deliver their opinion is another thing. Um, the social media platforms we've seen in recent times how. You get the keyboard warriors sitting behind a you know, screen. They're protected by that, um, but when they they're out in the open, they're they're a different different person. Um, you know, it's 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 affected me in the way that I've now come off social media um, because if I kept reading that, I, I would have been you know, ten foot under. Um, so look, you know, it it affects people in different ways. Um, it can be a very viable platform if used the, in in the correct manner. Um, Unfortunately, some people with the the vitriol that they put up there is it, it's it's tough to watch. It's tough to it's tough to listen to. It's tough to hear. Um, I don't hear it directly anymore. I, I get told by friends and family that this is what's being said, and I, I fear for my family because you know that they keep in touch with people back home overseas um, via social media, and they're they're reading this stuff more than me. And you know, my my son and my wife don't need to, to read the stuff that's on there, um, but. You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It, it affects you in different ways, as I said before. But, you know, what we need to do now is, you know, listen to the membership, the the ones that are, you know, generally in, involved in the club, vested interest in the club, 
you know, we, we do apologise for our, our lack of performance. Um, it's not through lack of hard work, not through lack of any effort at the moment, but, you know, we will be making changes. We will be, you know, doing things differently from now on. Um, and that's in respect of the membership that are out there that, that are fully supportive. You know, we are bringing through a young team. Um, things are going to take, it's going to take time. It's, it's not going to happen overnight. So we need, we need things to you know, start progressing very, very shortly um, to get this right. But, you know, the social media aspect, if, if you're getting, you know, trolls on there telling you, you know, that you're no good, um, doesn't really, shouldn't really affect you, but you hear it enough times, it often does. Yeah, absolutely, I hear you. Um, I guess one of the most frustrating things is to have your passion and your commitment challenged. I, I spoke of Gus, 30 years or more service. Mm. I've worked closely with you for three years, and one thing I get is passion, mm. commitment, determination, and a real will to make this club a better place. Yeah, people are questioning my passion for not only cricket, but Middlesex. Um, you know, I'd like to see them come in, spend a day with me um, around yeah. a game of cricket. Um, you know, people don't know, the people who comment, I don't know them, they don't know me. Um, they might have read a few things, they might have might have heard a few stories, but that's not the real me. People who are with me know what I'm what I'm about when it's around cricket, and, you know, I keep saying it, keep saying it to everybody, I, I hate losing. So this has been extremely difficult going through. When we do have a win, it's, it's almost like, you know, wow, it, winning the World Cup feeling. Um, you know, so if they're questioning my passion, they, they need their head rip. I agree. Um, Stuart, part of your kind of new remit, if you like, is that you will have that autonomy. Your reporting will now be directly into the CEO uh, and also um, to the cricket committee headed up by Richard Sykes. Yeah. Um, what comes first for you with, with that responsibility? Um, first and foremost, it'd be, it'd be great if you know, the club have promised that they are going to act very quickly to, to place the CEO um, at the top of the top of the tree very shortly. Um, once that's in place, we can start uh, getting things started, start things moving forward. Um, you know, I, I think the process is, is well underway and you know, should be a, a quick turnaround. Um, hopefully in the next couple of, well, days would be nice, but yeah. in, in the short period leading uh, into the, the final games of the season. But um, that'd be number one. Um, then once strike up a good relationship with the CEO, uh, we can start then thinking about how we're going to move, you know, freshen up the dressing room, um, start, you know, looking at players that you know we we want to bring in, uh, the, and not so much just the the name, but you know the character, the type of player they are, and um, once we have our targets, we'll uh, we'll go strongly after them. Brilliant. Talking about the players you want to bring in, um, culture, I know, is something that's extremely important to you, and in the past. I know you've spoken fairly honestly about the culture in the dressing room, and it hasn't quite been as you wanted it. How do you feel that's evolved now? You've got a, you've got a team in place that you've been working with, largely mm. inherited, but obviously you've, you've brought some of these youngsters through in that period that you've been here with us. Yep. Um, what's what's the mood in the camp like? What's the morale like, and what's the culture like now? Oh, oh look, this will be a massive massive shock to a, to a lot of the players. Um, you know, the decision of you know, moving Gus aside, but you know the the mood in the camp. The boys are good. They really are. Um, the way they go about their, their cricket practice, the way they're, they're buying into what we're trying to... We're not just going out there hitting balls. We're going out there to practice with a purpose. And, you know, this, this week's all been not about batting one, two and three. It's about batting in different phases. So you're batting in, you know, the, the first power play phase, the middle phase or the end phase um, to keep it very simple for them as well. And I think they're enjoying the fact that, OK, I'm not just a number one batter or I'm not just a number six batsman or... Am I the number one spinner, or am I just am I the leg spinner, or am I the left arm spinner? Um, just using different language and telling them everyone's important. Mm. You're going to need everyone to, to to play well to win a tournament, um, and it's not just the eleven guys who take the field. You know, everyone who's who's on the sidelines, who, who's doing rehab and injured and what have you, they're the ones. You know, everyone can make a contribution to to winning. It, it, we're not quite there. We're, we're getting closer. Um, Culture is one thing. It doesn't. It's not just an overnight success. You don't say you're going to do something differently and it happens all, all of a sudden. It, it takes time to, to build as well. But I think we're, we're building in the right direction. We're getting players to, to buy into what we're trying to trying to do, trying to achieve. Um, and and the, the players that we do look to bring in, we, we want them not to, you know, buck the trend, but to, to grab it and run with it moving forward. You know, we, we want to play to win. We want to play with, you know, controlled aggression. And we, we don't want to step, take a backward step. Um, 
they're the types of players we'll be we'll be targeting. For sure, one bloke that exudes that in abundance is Peter Hanscom, who obviously is our captain this year. Um, should have been last year were it not for COVID, but Peter's been with us this year uh, and will continue to play a big part for the rest of this season. He's obviously also coming back, which is great news, um, next year. Yep. Uh, and he'll be working alongside you closely as captain. Mm. Uh, great bloke to have. Uh, tremendous fellow, yeah. Um, had a lot of long chats with him through the summer this year and you know, the one thing he keeps doing is apologising for his lack of performance, um, which, you know, I'm sure everyone out there would, would say you know, he should be gone as well. But, look, he, he's a tremendous young man. He, he really is. The way he's come in and led this group um, has been outstanding. He's shown you know, a lot of courage in a lot of the decisions he's made and the direction he's taken the team at times. Um, challenged the senior players, but also encouraged the youngsters. So it's, it's the type of character we need to lead this group forward. Um, and it's great news that he is coming back um, for us. He, unfortunately, he's got to leave us early because Cricket Australia have you know, changed their domestic structure um, and their four-day cricket starting earlier. So he's, he's going to be a big loss towards the end of the year. But I think with, with him coming back, him coming back with the knowledge of what is expected and what's, what he has to do now and you know, the personnel that's going to be around, I think he's going to come back with a smile on his face, you know, licking his lips ready to get back into it. You know, as I said before, you know, great fellow, great bloke to have in this position. He and I work, we'll work really closely together. Um, and if there's anything, any gaps that we need to fill, um, I'm sure he'll come up with different ideas to, to me. And, you know, we can then, you know, settle on a, on, a, on, a, on a player or, you know, a way we want to play and we'll go out and execute. Excellent. Um, Stuart, the club's strategy, as announced earlier this afternoon, is to continue to develop that young talent that's coming through the pathway into the academy, into the second eleven, into the first team. We've had huge success, uh, certainly in recent years. I mean, we've given six debuts in the, uh, in the game in the first eleven to under 20 year olds in the last year and a bit. Mm. Um, when those youngsters come in, it's absolutely critical that they get the support um, structure that they need to succeed. Do you feel that the senior players in the squad have done enough uh, to this point to, to give them that support structure? Yeah, at times, at times they have, but uh, times are real critical times. They they probably be more more focused on on what they've they've had to do, um, which is you know fine as well as long as you're getting the job done. But um, you know, our, our batters, our young batters, we've been. You know, putting up the order um, to give them a bit of an opportunity, a bit more of an opportunity, um, and that's where they need the most help. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough job batting, particularly April May against the new Duke ball at Lords um, under lights with cloud cover. It's not an easy task. No one wants to do it. Um, so to to get the young kids out there doing it, um, you needed some guidance. You know, Sam Robson's been pretty close and shown shown the way on how to to get out there and bat in those conditions. Um, the only player to score 100 at Lords this year in Championship cricket uh, so far, uh, and he, he's second, nearly got the second one too, 97. So, you know, to have that leadership out there, dragging the young kids, showing what to do, and you know, then feeding that information back into the youngsters is is, is important. Um, we need more of it. We need the times of the game that looks like it's starting to to go or tough tough time. That's when we need our senior players to stand up grab the ball and run with it. Don't leave it to the young kids or don't push the young kids into that. They need to grab hold of that and you know, really show the boys how to go. Yeah. Um, that hasn't happened enough. Um, it's happened most of the time, but we need it to happen more often to get us through those tough times. And once we once we start working on how to do that, if, if the senior players don't, need, know, don't know how to do it, they need to come and ask questions. Yeah. So that's the other thing. They need the communication you know, goes both ways. We communicate to them what we what we expect. Um, they need to com communicate to us if they don't understand, and then we sit down and work out how we how we go about it. It's a two-way street, um, but you know we are getting better at it. Still not good enough. And Stuart, you touched earlier on the makeup of your squad. Um, do you or have you drawn up a short list, a target list, the players that you want to approach to to bring in to either add that experience? Uh, or, to, or to fill in the gaps you might see that the squad has. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's not like a, it's not a, sh not a shopping list, that's for sure. But it's a, it's a, it's a list that we're we're looking at, and we're we're really targeting character, of the person more so than, mm. you know, the, what they bring cricket-wise. Um, obviously, that's very important as well. But character mostly. 
Um, I, I, I just want people who are going to be, be able to come in, stand up, fight, really enjoy what they do, um, you know, guide this team forward, uh, and you know, it, when they get the opportunity, just to you know, run, run with it. Ideally, you still want players who have, have the ambition of playing international cricket. Um, if they haven't got ambition of international cricket, they've got a strong desire to help young kids get better. Um, and if we can find those players, um, you know, I'm sure we can find spaces for them in our squad. Unfortunately, we're going to have to, you know, have a look. Um, we need to create, create some, um, well, we need to create money so we can go and buy uh, players or bring players in. That's unfortunate, but this is professional sport. It's it's more than just a game of cricket at, at this level. Um, you know, we've got to start looking long and hard and you know, start thinking about those but those decisions and the sooner we can make those with the CEO, great, the better. Absolutely right. Stu, we talked about culture as well earlier. Um, I guess what's important for you in this next phase of, of Middlesex's development is that you've got the whole of that dressing room behind you. Um, you said morale in the camp is great. Do you need to now sit down with each and every one of those players, young and old, explain to them the vision, explain where this is going, uh, and get their buy-in? And it's a case of are you with us? Are you not? Um, yeah, you can do it. You can do it that way. There's 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 a number of ways to do it. Um, I think until we're settled on our squad for for next year, I think there's. There's no real point sitting down and talking with every ind individual player. Um, but once we are settled in our squad, the players know which, in which direction we want to go. Yeah. Um, they're under, well, if they're under no, if they're under any illusion, they need to come and talk to me again. But um, you know, we want to we want to take Middlesex back to the top of the tree, and we're not going to do that by hiding in a corner. We're going to do that by puffing our chest out, getting out there and playing tough cricket. Um, so if they're under any illusions. Uh, they, they need to let go of that very quickly and start doing what we need to do. But mate, look, you know, players will be upset. Um, but, you know, as I said before, it's just the way we need to start moving forward. Stu, we have a new competition starting this weekend, the Royal London Cup. Um, it's a fresh start. Um, it's been a challenging Red Bull competition so far. It's been a tough T20 competition. I mean, plenty, plenty of signs that things are going in the right direction. But like what, like the four-day four stuff, the old slip up and that's cost us dearly um, you must be hopeful of competing in the Royal London Cup uh, and I guess with that you get some new youngsters coming into the squad they've therefore obviously got an opportunity to prove themselves on this stage yeah 100% mate um, you know we, we could be losing players almost every week you know yeah. if, if things go on in the in the hundred that <laughs> shouldn't be going on with COVID etc um, I know we're lo losing Joe Cracknell um, on the 26th um, so look, that's that's awesome news for Joe, um, but you know it's a, it's a shame that we're going to be missing out on his services. Um, but once again, if he if he moves on, it's a, it's an opportunity for someone else to come in and play. So yeah, we have got a young group. Um, there's also great experience in there with you know Tim Murder, James Harris around the around the group, Sam Robson around, uh, Varen Chopra as well, yeah. um, and Peter obviously. But it's it's the it's the what now is the time we start start building that nurturing the young talent uh, with the senior boys in there. Um, so we've got a good blend of youth and experience um, to drive this forward. And let's not, we're not gonna focus on what the opposition, who they are, what they've, what they've done. We need to focus on what we're gonna do and teach these young fellas how to play you know, good 50 over cricket. Um, and it's the start of you know, some fine careers, that's all. Just talking about those youngsters, Stu, last question for you. Just talking about those youngsters, um, there's a lot of them. Uh, mm. they've come in you must be first and foremost thrilled with what they've done to this point um, but there is a hell of a production line there we were in the T20 finals with 10 academy kids uh, mm. in our starting 11 the other one was Robert who's been with us since 17 years of age mm. um, they're full of enthusiasm they're full of desire to do well on the big stage what's it like having that many youngsters in the squad is it is it more challenging? Or? Oh, mate, no. Look, it's 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 great. Um, it, it, take Blake Cullen. I mean, he's he's probably at the top of the tree, but mm. it, he he came in talking through that T20, you know, first game where he played Surrey and he got taken off by two two over head high beamers and was removed from the bowling attack. And to see him then put it, park it straight away, just mm. just put it aside 
and moved on to the next game and got better and better and better. And here he is, he's now in the 100 with the London Spirit. Um, there's interest from other mini tournaments around the world from for Blake Cullen. And you know, the rise of the kid is just amazing. And he's, he's been able to stay level. And just see him day to day, the way, the way he goes about his stuff, the way he, he thinks about it, he's just so simple, just does exactly what you know, we, we, we tell him, just do the basics. He does the basics better than anyone else and that's why he's having success. And we're seeing that with the young fellas. They, they come in and they, they really listen. Sometimes they don't trust. They go out and they try it their way and they come back and say, well, why didn't it work? Because you didn't do this. So keep going back to the basics and now we're getting more and more. Ethan Bamb is another one. Does the basics really well, yeah. and he's flying. So it, it's it's really nice seeing the young kids come in, sitting down, working out a plan, and then actually going out and executing and having their success. You see the smile on their face, and that gives me you know, a real real buzz to see that. Um, so the more of the more youngsters that come in and do that, the more success they have. Yeah, you know, the, the better feeling for for Middlesex as a whole. That yeah, the academy you know conveyor belt just keeps churning out some decent players. Um, and it's just up to us to, to, to nurture them, make sure we give them the opportunities at the right time. But we're getting good results out of the out of those youngsters and having youngsters in the squad keeps the old blokes on their toes as well. Um, you know, I think everyone enjoys playing cricket when you've got young fellas buzzing around you. It keeps you young, keeps you energised and yeah, makes you play better as well. So it, it's a it's a great thing to have. Can't have them all can't have all youngsters in there because we need some youth with experience around them to, to make them better. Um, as long as we can get the the experienced guys working really well with the youngsters, we'll start seeing better better performances. I said that was my last question. I'm just going to ask you one follow up on that. Um, I, as I said earlier, I understand members' frustration as do you uh, at the season we've had, um, and we've asked for patience. Uh, and this isn't an overnight fix. Mm. Look ahead, four years' time. You've obviously only got a, a year left on your own contract. I'm assuming you are very keen to extend your stay. Well, this you seem to me like someone who's in this for the long haul, you want to see this through. Hmm. Four years' time, where do you see us? We could ha- literally have a side full of homegrown Middlesex cricketers that are winning. That's the ultimate. Um, you know, a three-year three year plan, we've, we've sat down and discussed a three-year plan with the, the board the other night. Um, and that's to... We're still going to focus on bringing through youth, but we're going to probably do it a, a different way. Um, you know, still nurture the batting talent, but in a, in a different position in the batting order. Um, with a plan to rotate them as soon as they keep getting better and they become more consistent, more understanding of what's required out there, then slide them up the order to, to where they want to be. And if we do that in, in four years' time, as you say, we could have a complete Middlesex team full of academy graduates um, who are not only just playing in the game, but are actually contributing to to, to massive wins um, for Middlesex. And you know, to me, that's that's the ultimate. You know, I, I played in an era where there was a lot of a lot of overseas players playing back home in, in Australian cricket. And the thing that you know we we saw that as a as detriment to Queensland cricket, and we didn't want them, we didn't want it to happen. So we had to be better than the overseas players they brought in, and it just drove us to to to, to success. Now here, wouldn't it be great to then do it with all your own? Wouldn't it be great to have all Middlesex players, um, maybe an overseas player if, if, if required, but even get to that point where like, we don't need an overseas yeah. player, we're just all Middlesex players and we're good enough to win the game of cricket. That'd be the ultimate goal. That's, that might be pie in the sky, but it's not out of the, it's not out of the realms of possibility to get that done. And you know, we'll strive hard to to make sure that the, the Middlesex players we bring through and we um, play in the team are going to be good enough not only to play for Middlesex and win trophies, but also play for England. Stu, that sounds good to me. It sounds like a, a very nice point to end on. Um, Stu, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. Thanks ever so much for being so honest mm. uh, and open. Um, all the very best of luck moving forward, and I uh, hope it all works out. Thanks, Fletch. Yeah, once again, you know, to, the, to our members, you know, we, we do apologise. It hasn't been good enough. Um, I think the players know that they need to improve. Um, I think everyone needs needs to improve. Um, and once we start getting the clarity and stability from the top, um, I'm sure it'll tri- trickle down into you know all areas of the business, and you know Middlesex cricket can start moving forward. Thanks, Jim. Cheers.